We are back with the author of Small and Mighty Investor, Coach Carson. He and I are on a journey to help people realize what is possible via the small and mighty investing. How are you doing, Chad? Good, well, Michael. Thanks for having me back. Absolutely, man. So I'm going to read you three, I don't know, seemingly harsh statements. Uh, they're meant to wake people up, uh, but I want to riff on all three of them if you got a chance. You ready? Let's do it. And these are not aimed at you. These are at the audience. Number one, you are too busy to get rich. Number two, you have too many options to get wealthy. And number three, your friends are keeping you poor. A, what do you think about all those? And then pick which one you want to talk about. We can kind of riff on each of the three. What do you think? Uh, let's do number two. You have too many options to get rich. I, I like all three of those. Those are good. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I feel like I use a sports metaphor since we're talking coach, Coach Carson. Um, when I used to play football, I always in my, there was always a football offensive coordinator. So the person who decided the plays on offense or defense, really. And often they would get fancy. They would try to do all these different things and different lineups and different formations. And the teams that really did the best were the ones that kept it really simple or simple enough. And they just punched the other team in the mouth. <laughs> they just they were just tough. <laughs> and so you, to use a tough football analogy, that start with simple and just execute the heck out of it. Just do it really, exactly. really well and get good at the little things. I, I just I love this idea. I, whether it's real estate investing, my online business, my family. Just man, it is so complicated. It's hard to figure out things. I, I think we're in the the era of overwhelm with, with the agree. internet and with information. So really the superhero quality as a real estate investor, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, as a human being trying to navigate this stuff is just extreme simplicity and focus. Yeah. And I think that, I think that, that that's what that quote said to me. No, it's exactly right. I mean, I, you know, you and I have been helping people for, for decades now trying to, to start this journey, stay on this journey and man, they're all over the place. They're not focused. They, and I really do think it's too, you, they have too many options to get wealthy, right? To use the sports analogy, you know, you can run a flea flicker, you can run a post, you can do all these. What? How about run it up the middle? Yeah. <laughs> you, know? you know, how about the boring, you know, three, three yards, of, three yards of down. Yeah. And I think that's so, especially in real estate, yeah. right? Got, you could be yeah. a flipper, a wholesaler, buy, buy multis, do singles, buy land. I mean, it's just, I mean, it gets so crazy. And then the other thing is, it takes time, man. You and I both didn't become elite at what we do for years. And yeah. and frankly, I'll admit this. I'm sure you will too. You're still learning after yes. multiple decades. And yes. and people just aren't patient, man. They don't they don't give it time to to really get roots and get good at something. Yeah, I agree. I mean, to to, to the point of still learning, like I've been looking at my own portfolio over the last few weeks and I've had a, several maintenance issues, which is not uncommon, right? But mm -hmm. I've been thinking like I'm not putting enough attention on I have 99 units I have 33 properties along with, with a 50 50 partner even with that I'm thinking like I'm, I'm too big like I, I can't focus my attention to, to really be excellent at the properties I do have to treat my tenants as, as well as possible to treat my properties as well as possible so I, I think this focus thing I don't care if you're a brand new rookie I don't care if you're a veteran like I, I just really think it's the it's the path to being excellent at something. Like, think about Steve Jobs. I've been listening to some podcasts about him lately. He was he was a megalomaniac on simplicity. Just be simple. Just he, he when he came back and took back over the Apple uh, business the second time as a CEO, they had all sorts of like every product had three versions and there was like tw twenty products or it was just it was just all over the place. And he was like, nope, we're gonna do like two products. We're going to do the Macintosh and we're going to do this thing called the iPod and we're going to do it really well. And then a decade or two later, maybe we'll add a phone to that. Or we'll have I had an iPad, but like just get really good at what you're doing. And especially if you're doing this part time, like if you got five to 10 hours a week, like you got to be even more focused. And yes, you, you, you can't, you can't. I mean, if, if Michael and, and Chad doing this full time can be a little bit scattered because we do three things, maybe you need to do like one and do it really, really well. Yeah, folks, again, you have too many options to get wealthy. It's just pick one, get good at it, show patience, discipline, all of that. So, okay, we got two more. You're too busy to get rich or your friends are keeping you broke. <laughs> Let's go with the friends one. Uh, that's always, 
I, I remember yeah. the, like the first seminar I went to out of college when I started getting into the business thing, I heard the old Jim Rohn quote, you know, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with, whether it's yeah. your, it's your weight or your strength or your, whether your shape, them. whether it's yeah. your wealth. I mean, and that's not saying like people who you, who aren't, you don't want to spend time with aren't good people. But if you have goals, if you're passionate about those goals, if you want to improve your life, whether that's real estate investing, fitness, whatever it is, the, the quickest way, the quickest shortcut to getting there, because we are a social creature, we human beings work with other people, is to find a tribe of, of other people, the, you know, three, four, five people who you can be a close team with and spend more time with, accountability, education, whatever you want to call that, that's mm -hmm. the shortcut to actually being the person you want to be. Yeah. I mean, there's so much in that. I, I too heard that quote the first time, probably from Jim Rome or somebody quoting him. And I got to tell you, I didn't really understand it. I was like, I don't get it. Uh, but then, you know, I buy my first rental property and it goes horribly wrong. It was a complete disaster with the first tenant. And it's really weird because if I were to tell my normal friends that story, they would have been all kinds of, see, I told you so, you can't do it. It's a scam. Fresno sucks you know, blah, 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 blah. But then if I talk to people in the business, they're like, yep, yeah, you know, it happens. You know, you know, they got divorced. It's not on the rental app. You'll be okay. Keep going. Try it again. And it really is. If you're, if you're trying to do something, weight, relationships, real estate, you've got to get around other people that that's important. If you don't change your network, you're going to go back to where you were. You can't make a fundamental life change and not change the network because they will just inadvertently, they're not being evil. They're not doing it on purpose. It's just, that's who they are. And they will pull you back. They will not let you leave and you will give up and be back to right where you were. Yeah. There's a, there's an author I really like, not real estate related named Joseph Campbell. And he was the one who formulated that idea of the hero's journey. And what and basically the hero's journey is a personal development journey. It's you becoming a better real estate investor, you becoming a better whatever you parent, uh, person, a, you know, a exerciser. But he always says that the hero's journey is an individual journey, and in that you have to leave the people who you were with before. That's natural. Like we as parent, I'm a parent, you're a parent. Our kids leave the nest. Like they have to get yep. out, and you, you can try to hold them in the nest, but you need to let them go out from under your shadow. The same way, like we have to let some of the old groups go, not completely, you know, you can still stay in touch with them. But if you want to spend most of your time with the new folks, the ones who, when you make a mistake in real estate, aren't going to say, told you so, look at that, you're going, you're, you're horrible. I mean, that stuff's toxic. Like that, that mindset oh. will just pull you down. And, oh. and so I think that, that the people you hang around with, it's just a secret weapon. It's going to, it's going to help pull you up. And it's the good times too. Like when you yeah. want to celebrate, Hey, you just made 50,000 bucks. Like your, your, your friends who are in this wealth circle are going to like, they're going to understand, they're going to get it. They're going to say, congratulations. Whereas if you, some other circles, they're going to say, make you feel guilty for that. They're going to make you feel yeah. wrong. They're gonna, can I have wrong. some? <laughs> yeah. They're going to ask you for a loan. Yeah. That's, that's probably what's going to happen. So yeah, you just, you got to be careful who you spend time with. Well, let's, let's go one level deeper on this, especially in today's world of social media. Again, I think a lot of folks understand the kind of five physical friends, but man, if you're not monitoring, managing, blocking, deleting toxicity from your social media channels, you could go backwards just as fast. Yeah. Again, the, a lot of folks are spending more time on their devices. And man, if I look at their social media feeds and it's full of fear and scare and negativity and envy, if your social media feed leaves you feeling any of those nasty states, I got some hard advice. That's on you. You need to fix that. You could fix the block button. The, these things don't have a soul. They're just trying to feed you what you look at and they're trying to give you more of it. Own your stuff, block yeah. some people. Yeah, and not only block it, I, I'm a long form content creator for a reason. I think I think long form videos that are 10 to 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes, podcasts, long articles, I think our brain is built for that kind of input. And so find the right people, hang out with Michael, hang out with me, hopefully at Coach Carson, but then study them over a long, a quiet period of time. Like I like to give myself these deep work periods or these deep study periods of 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, instead of that like five second candy feed over and yeah. over and over. A little, 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 little drip. Yeah, yeah. You know, a little bit. Little, it, I, I do it too. Like I, I, you know, I, every once in a while you're on Instagram, you're on 
my daughters, I'm trying to, you know, they steal our phone and they're looking at like Pinterest and all this stuff. And all of a sudden you're 10 minutes down in this toxicity loop, as opposed to be deliberate about your input. I think that's what you're trying to say too. It's like, yeah, be, be deliberate about the intake of information in your life. Not only the people you're hanging around with, but we now spend a ton of time online. I mean, how many hours a day do we do this? And yeah. if you're, if you're constantly doom scrolling, going down these loops, it's tough. But if you deliberately say, and actually write this down on my calendar. So I say this week, I want to study this, this, and this, this podcast, this, this, this audio book, whatever, like make a conscious effort to feed your brain certain things. Yeah. There's just one more thing on this. Again, you and I have enough experience that if we were to see a doom, you know, if it got in our feed somehow, it's because we have evidence. Yeah. We have stacked uh, undeniable evidence that we know what we talk about works. But if you're in your first year and you don't have any of those undeniable truths, you you your first experience is like mine, it's horrible. And then you're doom scrolling, you're it's like adding poison. You're it's just not going to get you there, folks. Please, please, please take ownership of that stuff. All right, that leaves the final one. It's actually my favorite. You are too busy to get rich. Mm. How does that land? It's good. Very good. Yeah, I think we are all chronically busy. We were talking about, you know, having too many options. I think this is related. We're, we're all busy. Like everybody in the world is busy these days. That's the, the modern condition. But, you know, the people who are really effective, you know, I know studying Michael, see what you've done over the years, look at my own career, look at anybody who's an entrepreneur, they choose what to be busy with. And then it's amazing at the end of every week, like how much, how many things I ignore. I just yeah, don't get to. Exactly. exactly. I, I, they're important. I know, I know for somebody, but they're, they're not my most important things. Yeah. And you just have to get good at saying no to a lot of things. And I, I, I love the metaphor. The, the very first personal development book I ever read was by Stephen Covey, Covey, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. He has this four quadrant uh, kind of paradigm. And so just imagine if you're, if you're just listening to this, that they're on the top left quadrant is, are the things that are really urgent and important. So this is like your house is on fire. You gotta put the house out or you, can't, you need to pay this bill or whatever. So it's urgent and important. But then right below that in, in the quadrant three are things that are urgent, but not important. These are things like somebody calling you and just saying, hey, can you do this for me? And it's not on your list of to-do things. And but it seems urgent to that person or to somebody else or you know whatever. That's, you have to eliminate those things. You have to figure out a way to like push those off into like the, the, another time. And so quadrant one, you have to do because it's urgent and important. But quadrant two are not urgent, but very important things. These are things like your exercise, your sleep, your relationships with people, your relationships with your, your business relationships, the people you talk to. And he, Covey always said that you, know, you can't go be efficient and fast with people. You can't do that. Machine, machines you can be efficient and fast with, spreadsheets you can be efficient and fast with, but people you have to take your time. And so, you, so what I like, I like to just build my life around, try to avoid the number ones as much as you can by preventing all those emergencies. But then build your whole life around quadrant two. And it might be, it might be if you're super busy, you might have to start with 10 minutes of quadrant two activities in the morning, reading, watching a, a Michael Zuber video that actually is going to encourage you to do better, reading a good book, whatever. Um, that's quadrant two. And then quadrant four is the not urgent, not important. That's the doom scrolling. That's the thing. How, have you really gotten better from that yeah. Instagram feed? Like, really? Like, I'm sure this, maybe you found a good person to follow, but if you, you know, if, if you don't want to get rid of it completely, just, you know, you got to limit that because we're all busy. And so there's always time. There's always some place you can find it. You got to start eliminating the quadrant four stuff and the quadrant three stuff as much as you can. Yeah. I mean, there's so much in that that is so awesome. And again, being too busy to get rich is, is it just A, the acknowledgement, but B, to me, it's like, to your point, like Stephen Covey's like, what's important to you? You are undoubtedly doing things today that are not important and not urgent. Yes. Own that. Don't do those. For me, I had to find 20 minutes a day. That's what it was. Get a buy box, be laser focused, like laser focused and look at it every day. You do that for a long time. You become a lead at it. You can find great deals. You can keep moving forward. Question uh, again, for you, Michael, when, when yep. you did the 20 minutes, did you do it at the end of the day or did you do it at the beginning of the day? Well, again, I would travel a lot. I would prefer to do it first thing, but given yeah. I was traveling in different time zones, the worst case would be in the evenings. But I tried to get it done before 9 a.m. every yeah. morning. 
That was my, that was my point. If, if possible, yeah, I'm the same way. Every once in a while, you got to fit that quadrant two thing at the end of the day. But if you can do it quickly at the beginning of the day, the first thing, what a good day. You've just started the day with the thing that was most important to you. And then if, you're, if your day is filled up with a bunch of emergencies that aren't important to you after that, okay, try to fix that later. But at least you got your 20 minutes in, in the morning. Yeah. And again, it's really important. That's a great question because there were some days technology wasn't you know helpful. I was traveling and the plane didn't have Wi-Fi or whatever. And you know what? I would get to the hotel. I, I, I flew to Tokyo, you know, wherever long that took. I didn't have a chance to look because the Wi-Fi was down. Well, before I fell asleep, I made sure to do the things, sent out a couple of notes, found, I actually found a deal that day. I remember that. I remember it vividly in the Tokyo hotel. You just own your stuff, right? It's either important or it's not. And to me, it was important to, to look at a deal, look at the market every day, right? The buy box. So yeah, pretty, pretty cool. Again, folks, I'm going to reverse these now. You are not too busy to get rich. You do not have too many options to get wealthy. And if you get some new friends, they won't keep you broke. Coach, closing thoughts, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at coachcarson.com is my website. If you're watching here on YouTube, of course, you can find just search for Coach Carson. I have a new a new episode and video that comes out every single Monday. So I'd love to connect with you there. And I've, I'm, of course, going to be here on Michael's channel every, every Tuesday as well. There you go. Appreciate you, man. Thanks again. Thanks, Michael.